a little reflection here about this. It's very, very important because a lot of us are dealing with challenges in general, but this challenge is one of the, uh, the foremost challenges that young people deal with today. And that is the, the challenge of temptation, desire, and especially in regards to the opposite gender. Now, one thing to understand here about Yusuf alayhi salam's situation. So of course he's being seduced, this woman is literally throwing herself at him. And she's bolted and locked up the doors. So she's bolted and locked up the doors, why? So that he can't get away, he can't escape. Alright? But at the same time, think about how that makes the test for Yusuf alayhi salam that much more difficult. Because if she has bolted and locked up the doors, and nobody can get in and nobody can get out, doesn't that ensure privacy? So, at the same time, the person in that test, couldn't they also think to themselves that nobody's gonna find out? I'm not gonna get busted, I'm not gonna get caught. I mean, these ladies locked up like all the doors, multiple levels of doors. So it's the front doorway, then then comes to the hallway, then it comes to this room, and she's double bolted all three of the doors. So ain't nobody getting nowhere near here. Nobody will see, nobody will know, nobody can barge in, nothing, just quiet, as if it didn't even happen. Do the deed and walk away. That's it. So it makes the test that much more difficult. The first lesson is, what does Yusuf salam say? She said, وَقَالَتْ هَيْتَلَكْ She said, come on, let's go. Complete, just, it's an open offer. What did Yusuf salam say? قَالَ مَعَاذَ Allah. I seek the refuge of Allah. The refuge of Allah. Grammatically speaking, ma'ad Allah. The refuge of Allah. This is a maf'ul. Alright, the maf'ul mutlaq. The maf'ul for emphasis and the verb has been omitted. That help, that example that I gave you earlier. Ma'ad Allah. That I need the refuge of Allah and I need it now. I need the protection of Allah now. So the first thing it reminds us of is, the only way out of such situations is to remind yourself of Allah. To think of Allah. Because yes, nobody can get to you at that time. Nobody sees what you're doing, nobody knows what you're doing, nobody's gonna catch you, nobody's gonna barge in. It's, it is the best laid out plan in the world. The best laid out plan in the world. But you gotta remind yourself of the one who does see you, who does know, know what you're doing at that time, and the only one who sees and knows what you're doing at that time, and that is Allah. Remind yourself of Allah. In any situation, remind yourself of Allah. That's the way out of sin. Remind yourself of Allah. Just say the name of Allah. As difficult as it is at that moment, as horrible as it feels to even say the name of Allah at such a moment, because you know it's gonna just, it's gonna crash the party, right? It's gonna pop the balloon, it's gonna take all the fun out of the situation. Force yourself to just simply say, Allah. And see if you still feel like doing it. If you're still comfortable doing it. If you still enjoy doing it or not. Whatever it is, whatever the sin is, just say the name of Allah and see how that works out. So that's the thing, Ma'ad Allah. إِنَّهُ رَبِّي أَحْسَنْ مَثْوَايَ إِنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِحُ الظَّالِمُونَ The ayat go on to tell us, فَاسْتَبَقَ الْبَابَ This is the next thing. So the first situation is, whenever you're dealing with temptation, desire, a test, and it's very difficult, it's gripped you, it's literally like there's no way out of it, you don't see yourself being able to overcome this test, you personally, individually, as a human being, with your flaws and your weaknesses, you might not be able to overcome that test. Sure, you're too weak. But you don't have to overcome that test by yourself. Who do you have on your side? Allah. Seek strength in moments of weakness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ma'ad Allah. Alright, the second thing is Yusuf alayhi salam, once you say the name of Allah, you just say Allah. And then that's, you get that sinking feeling in your stomach. Like this is something I shouldn't be doing. This is something I can't do. I can't disappoint Allah. I can't disobey Allah. I can't ruin my relationship with Allah for a few moments of pleasure. I can't. 
and that sinking feeling hits you in the stomach, and you know you got to get out of this situation now, then what's the next course of action? Look what Yusuf alayhi salam does. فَاسْتَبَقَ الْبَابَ He ran to the door. Literally, فَاسْتَبَقَ Like he ran for his life. Like he sprinted. استباق, he sprinted towards the door. He sprinted towards the door. Get out of that situation. But wait a second. Wait a second. The Quran, that's how deep the Quran is. Just when you think, okay, that's a lesson, alhamdulillah, subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanakallah, that's a lesson. Wait, wait a second. Two, two ayahs ago, it just told us, what did she do to the doors? She didn't just close them, she didn't just lock them, she double bolted them. Double bolted the doors. And one door or multiple levels of doors? Multiple levels of doors, multiple sequences of doors. So it's the room, then the hallway, then the main door, then the gate of the house. al abwaba doors, plural. And she double bolted all the doors. It's like what we say in English when you lock something and you throw the key away. When you lock something and then you throw the key away. Now what I want you to think about for a second, you gotta think a little bit deeper here, okay? So stay with me. Yusuf alayhi salam is a prophet and a messenger of Allah. Aren't prophets and messengers like really, really intelligent people? They are. Scholars have written, they are not just very intelligent people, they are the most intelligent people. Scholars have written about prophets that when, when, when people's intellectual, where people's intellectual capacity ends, that's where the intellectual capacity of the prophets begins. They are the most intelligent people, human beings. If they are the most intelligent human beings, then sprint. I told you, it doesn't say that he ran to the door, he sprinted to the door. This door is locked. If I just got up from this chair right now, I ran full speed ahead towards the door, and the door is double locked, double bolted. What's gonna happen to me when I get to the door? No, no, no. I'm gonna run face first into the door. Now I'm a pretty big dude, so I might be able to actually cause some damage to the door. Alright, but you're talking about a palace, you're talking about big old doors, you're talking about normally sized human being. So when that human being runs full speed ahead into a double bolted door, what's gonna happen? He's gonna hit the door and he's gonna fall to the ground. So logically, does it make sense to sprint towards a door that you know is double bolted and double locked? Does that logically make sense? Does that folks? Come on people. No, it does not. But what is Yusuf salam doing? He knows that he's got to get out of this situation. He knows that he has remembered Allah, that's given him strength to avoid the temptation. I got to get out of here ASAP. So he runs to the door. Knowing full well, seeing that the door is double bolted. He sees the chain around the handles and the big old padlock on there. He sees that on the door, but he still runs. You know why? Because he remember, he put his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows that when he reaches that door, what can he do? He knows what's in my capacity is to get from here to the door. That's what I'm capable of doing. So what is he doing? He's getting to the door as fast as he can. He with his bare hands cannot open up the chains on the door, the lock on the door. He can't do that. So he says, oh Allah, I'm going to do what I'm capable of. I'm going to do what's within my capacity. And I'm going to leave you to take care of the rest. And does Allah have any limitations to what he can do? No. And what does the narration, what do the tafasir, what does the hadith tell us? That when Yusuf alayhi salam, when he reached that door that was double bolted, double locked, the second his foot hit right in front of the door, the second he placed his foot right in front of the door, what happened to the door? Went flying open. Went flying open. And then when he reached the next set of doors that she had locked, as soon as he reached that, what happened to the door? Boom! Went flying open. And they just kept opening for him. He just kept running and they just kept opening. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that happen as a reminder to us. That's a lesson for us in the Qur'an. 
that we'll all deal with difficult situations, we'll all deal with adversity and temptation. We gotta stay strong, we gotta hang in there. But sometimes you're not strong enough to hang in there. That's okay, you don't have to be strong enough to deal with everything. You just gotta have a relationship with the one who can help you overcome everything. And who is that? Allah. Remind yourself of Allah at those moments. Think of Allah at those moments. And when you find that strength, and that spiritual conviction to overcome, because you've thought about Allah, you've reminded yourself of Allah, then at that time, the second course of action is, now get out. Now get yourself in a better situation. Get out of that place in that situation that is making you feel tempted. And sometimes it might seem like, but how do I get out of there? Do what you can do. If you can at least go from here to the door, do at least that much. Do what you're capable of. And let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take care of the rest. Because remember, Allah has no limitations. And He'll make something miraculous happen for you, like He did for Yusuf alayhi salam. Alright, let's continue.